Good morning. Derek Watson, the angry dentist here. In my, <laughs> in the latest of my dental institution lectures, I'm going to be covering oral health or non-health as most of the country experiences it, leaving aside the fact that half of the uh, patients in the UK don't even feel the need to seek dental help on a regular basis. I'm just talking about how to get patients healthy. Now you wouldn't think, would you, that we are still, there's any doubt or any debate about what, you know, what's the best way to get a patient healthy. Bearing in mind that dental health is probably the simplest type of health. I mean, really, if you, uh, patients eat more sugar than they think, therefore they get holes in their teeth. If a patient's got holes in their teeth and you explain to them why, it it's always comes as, as a surprise to them that the amount of sugar that they're eating is, is above the threshold and that's what's causing the problem. And nobody brushes their teeth as well as they think so they get a mouthful of plaque bacteria and that makes their gums shrink and everybody whose gums have shrunk they've shrunk because for years and years and years they haven't brushed brushed their teeth as well as they thought they did then and then that's the only two so that's the two things which is one of the things that attracted me to dentistry you know why be a doctor and have to worry about a gazillion different ailments when you can be a dentist and spend your life fixing a disease that's only got two causes, <laughs> no, A, A or B, B or A, but uh, or C, which is everything else, and everything else in dentistry is not much to be honest. It's either brushing or diet, which is in a way, is, you know, is dentistry. I think is very important in the general overall sort of health service sense in that. If we could successfully implement healthcare reform in terms of prevention, cure and aftercare in dentistry, I mean successfully, not the way we do it at the moment, then it could serve as a template for other similarly simple problems and uh, give us, you know, and, and as a first rung on the ladder for other more complicated problems. Now, let me just elaborate on that a bit. What, if you're a dentist and you're watching this, what you're going to see coming into your surgery today is a vast, the majority of people who are not going to be orally healthy in the strict sense, by which I mean the sort of, the sense we're taught at dental school. And your typical patient will come in and let's take a new patient, I say, let's not, let's leave aside the baggage of whether or not you're responsible for getting them into this state, but let's say a new patient will come in and you have a look at their teeth and perhaps they're, you know, they're covered in plaque, they've got some pocketing, some gum disease and um, not decay so much nowadays, but, um, but possibly decay. And you'll say to the patient, you know, your mouth's not, not brilliantly healthy. And what's their response is, is always the same. I have been to my dentist every six months for as long as I can remember I have always done whatever was asked. The dentist has told me to brush my teeth more often. The dentist has told me to brush my teeth harder. Uh, I've been to see the hygienist. The hygienist has always scaled my, and polished my teeth every six months, four months, three months, delete as applicable. Um, she told me to use TP brushes. I use TP brushes. She told me to use mouthwash, so I'm using mouthwash. I am flossing my teeth. Um, you know, I've got an interspace brush, I've got an electric brush, I've got an electric brush and a normal brush. So I can't see, for the life of me, why you are telling me, you're still telling me, you're still telling me after, you know, you're one of a long line of practitioners. Every time I go, I have done everything I've been told and every time I go, I'm told, oh no, you're not quite right, you're not quite perfect, you've got to do this you've got to do that, you're not doing this, you've got to do that. No wonder the patients get frustrated. I would get frustrated. I would, I mean, 
they've got a genuine grievance, haven't they? You can see why they are. And then what happens is then you say to them, well, look, if you only did this or that, you'll be all right. And they're like, yeah, 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 I've heard it all before, mate. So, well, where are we going wrong with this? You know, and this hasn't really changed. In fact, if anything, it's got slightly worse since I qualified in the early 80s. And you have to go back to basics and look at the cause of gum disease. The, the two causes, like I said, diet, not so much of a problem these days, but brushing, almost uniformly terrible in the patients that we get. And then we disclose every single patient. Certainly every new patient, we take intraoral photographs and uh, obviously radiographs of new patients as necessary and uh, we disclose every patient who comes in for a routine checkup. And almost always their plaque control is terrible. Now don't forget, like I said, these people are using TP brushes, they say they're flossing, they're using, you know, sometimes they're using mouthwash and they swear blind they'd clean their teeth twice a day and yet their plaque control is horrible. Now why is that? I think because as a profession, and I include hygienists in this, and hygienists have a special place in this, which I may, may cover today, I may cover tomorrow, we are failing to show the patients what the cause of the problem is. For the most part, they've never used a disclosing tablet. They can't see the plaque. They don't know, they've heard the, the word plaque, but they don't know what plaque is. They don't know where it is. They don't know what it looks like. It's the invisible, unseen enemy and so what what do they do they put a brush in their mouth and they sort of rattle it around and in the hope <laughs> that it will catch some plaque and that uh, they won't get shouted at the next time they go to the dentist so they're actually like brushing blind aren't they they're doing most of the patients most of the people in this country who brush their teeth are brushing blindfold because they can't see the plaque and of course, because they can't see it, they just can't remove it. So when they come to us and, it, and we stain it up, they're like, oh, yeah, 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 I do look like Dracula. So what's the, you know, how do we get over this? How do, as a profession, how have we got to be so bad at recommending such basic oral hygiene measures as plant control? I think, as I say, I think the hygienists have a lot to, lot to answer to because they are, you know, if you get a hygienist in your practice, what's the job of a hygienist, okay? What, what is, honestly, what, and I'm not saying what do I think the job of a hygienist is, I mean, what do they think their job is? Their job is to scale, isn't it? To scale your teeth, to have a scale and polish. You go and see the hygienist for a scale. They come into your surgery. The first thing they do is ask you if they can have a set of the very finest gold-plated American Eagle scalers because that apparently is the key to oral, the oral health of the nation is buying expensive scalers and they set about scaling everybody on a monthly basis every six months every four months whatever and everyone oh and they have a nice chat and everything and then they have a six months oh see you at six months time for your next scaling okay lovely yeah fine no not at all fine not in the slightest bit fine one scale and polish is all you need. If you are not brushing your teeth well enough to stop yourself getting scale, and I exclude the very, very few people who've got very, very high uh, sort of calcium levels in their saliva who, who get who get scale the day, you know, the day the bacteria dies that it turns into scale. But they're very, very far and few. I'm talking about the majority. I'm talking about a mass public approach to public health here if someone needs a scale and polish every six months then something's wrong somewhere and that something is wrong with the hygienist because he or she is not preventing oral disease they are just treating it and oral disease does not need to be treated it that is not the approach that we need to take with oral it needs to be prevented and it can be prevented and as I say the point is if it can be prevented in dentistry, then it probably could be prevented in a lot of other diseases as well. So, I think, you know, to a certain extent, you know, we've got a sort of a legacy 
hangover from the old fee for item uh, health service where dentists and hygienists were paid per scale and polish and not paid per disclosing tablet. If they'd been uh, the, the, the uh, third party capitation plans really captured the essence of oral health in that the way to do it is to uh, assess like a a cohort of patients. You've got a certain amount of disease in, in, in a, a group of patients and then you say to a dentist, look I'm going to pay you to reduce the level of disease in these patients uh, and uh, if as a result you save money by because you need to do less fillings and scalings and things then you can keep the difference or it will share the difference, what they call a shared savings approach and so you're you're motivated, you know, to make your patients healthy. Under the old fee for item, um, you were, how can I put it, in a way you, you, we had, we always had more business than we needed. I mean, Shan Chief was, was completely wrong when he said that fee for item motivates dentists to do more work than they need to. I'm, I'm, I mean, it did motivate some dentists, a very few dentists to do more work than they needed to, that's true. But for the most part, we were rushed off our feet. We, we, we all had waiting lists that were two, three, four weeks long. You, you didn't need to do any more work than you, than you needed. The work was all over the place, do you know what I mean? Why, why uh, run the risk of uh, getting yourself struck off for doing dentistry that didn't need doing when you, wait, when you had one patient coming in the surgery, one patient in the waiting room and one patient going numb somewhere else? But that's what happened when you try and micromanage a profession using people who've never worked in it and don't know really what, what how it works. So, you get your patients in, you disclose them, you give them the what they need, which is a medium soft toothbrush, some disclosing tablets, a mirror, your business card, in a little plastic bag and pack them off and say come back and see me before they've had a chance to forget how to do it if you again with people with gum disease six months is, is too long in my opinion what happens with patients if you see them every six months is that their oral health goes up and then down again and then up and then down again so every time you see them six months later they've completely forgotten what you've told them and they've completely forgotten uh, to brush in other words they've had a system reset they've gone back to how they were before you even so you you cannot influence these people's oral health on a six monthly basis you have to see them every four months and if you see them every four months then then their health goes up like this but very few people will come in on a pay-as-you-go and pay let's say Take figures off the top of my head: 50 pounds for a checkup and 50 pounds for oral hygiene every four months, or or even 50 pounds for hygiene every four months. That's why the the, the capitation plans work so well, in my opinion. Is that there's there isn't that cost barrier. You know, you have to remove certain things from the cost equation. We. Uh, don't charge for an initial checkup. If you're a new patient to the practice, then you get your first checkup free of charge. If you're a patient of the practice, at any checkup, you don't pay for x rays. That's to remove x rays from the cost equation. I don't want to be able, I don't want to be going back to the patient and saying, uh, I need to take some bite wings, is it all right? It's 12 pounds. Or, uh, you've got a brown tooth there, I think it might, you might have had a blow and you might have killed it off. I'd like to check to see if it's got a periopical area on it. Uh, that would be eight pounds, is that okay? And, and the patient's gonna say, what are they gonna say? They're gonna say, look, my, that tooth's been brown for 20 years, it's because I used to smoke. No. <laughs> so now, but if you say no, it's free, they say, yeah, all right then. And uh, it's the same with the brush. Don't tell them to go and get a brush give them a brush don't tell them don't don't say this is the technique that I need you to brush how to brush 
when they've got the stuff on their teeth, sit them down and, and you brush half their teeth and ask them to brush the other half. Ask them, say, look, okay, I'm gonna just show you what I want you to do with the brush now. Do you wanna brush the, I'll brush half, you brush half. Do you wanna brush the left or the right? Do you wanna brush the uppers or the lowers? It's, it's a bit odd, but it's not odd once you get the hang of it, people entirely, you know, people say, oh, I haven't done this since I was four. And that is absolutely the correct thing, isn't it? I mean, that is so true. People, the last time most people saw a disclosing tablet was at primary school when they were taught how to brush their teeth and then they're expected 20, 30, 40, 50 years later to still have retained all that wisdom that they picked up on that one hour when they were aged four about how to brush their teeth. And God knows their parents can't teach them. So, and floss, we lost a patient the other day because I told him not to floss. And he wrote us a nice little letter saying, Dear, I've, I've gone to see another dentist, thank you so much. But when I came to see you, um, you wrote, you know, took photos and everything, sent me a nice letter, long, we sent him a nice long letter including all the internal photos and everything. And in it I say, please do not use TP brushes, of course still mouthwash, or floss unless, unless I have specifically told you to. And that's, um, and he objected to that. And he said, that's, that's weird advice. He said, I can't understand my previous dentist for 14 years told me to floss. And he never told me I got gum disease. <laughs> and now I come and see you, and you tell me my gums are less than perfect, and I shouldn't floss. <laughs> You're obviously a lunatic. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, okay, fine. You know, perhaps you're not ready for the old Watson uh, oral health program at the moment. And we do, it is true, we do tell people to do less. I spend more time in the same way as you, you get people who underbrush and overbrush. And the people who underbrush, in a way, are easier to treat because they, to get someone to brush more, it's easy to demonstrate that they need to brush more and it's more understandable for them, you know? They can, they can get their brains around it more easily. Yet you get someone who's, who scrubs their teeth like a lunatic and has done all their life, and they are, it's almost impossible to sort of try and communicate to them that they need to brush their teeth less, which is important because in almost every case, when we're talking to people about brushing, they can do less and get more just by just seeing the plaque. And I say, look, brush off the plaque. When the plaque has gone, stop brushing. If they've got abrasion cavities, then obviously you, you, you're in with a chance, especially if you've got an intraoral camera. Where, where, what do you mean I'm over brushing my teeth? Here, on a computer screen. This is, this is the, the enamel. This is where the gum should be. This is the root of the tooth. We shouldn't be seeing that. This is where your gum is. It shouldn't be up there. Oh, it's not going to grow back, is it? No, it's not going to grow back. Our objective is to stop things getting worse. So I tell people not to floss. And I, you know why? I challenge you, right? The next patient who comes in and says that they floss, right? If they say, say, do you floss your teeth? And they'll say, yes. Give them a bit of floss. <laughs> Give them, tear off 15 inches of floss and give it to them, just say, oh, show me what you're doing then. And honestly, it'll cheer you up. It'll, you'll be laughing about it for days. I've been, I've been in practice for 30 years and I must, and probably I have seen hundreds of thousands of patients. And I've probably only met two, two that could properly floss without cutting their gums to shreds and, and wearing great grooves in their teeth. And that's because I showed them. <laughs> so, Flossing is, do not tell your patients to floss. And certainly don't tell them to floss if they can't already brush. You know, get the brushing right, get the plaque control right first. Get the plaque control right. And uh, some people can't even get the plaque control right, but certainly don't. The order really is plaque control first, <clears throat> throw the electric brush out the window, okay, because it, it's not capable of doing the teeth in the detail required, uh, 
plant control, tell them to stop flossing, throw the electric brush out the window, and then if they're, if they're still having trouble with the plant control, then you've got to start looking at things like interspace brushes, okay? Just a, an, a, an ordinary brush, but cut right down, so small, so that they can see. And in fact, you can brush all of your teeth with an interspace brush. It's the only, if you're going to get stuck on a desert island, the only brush you want to have washed up on the shore is an interspace brush, and you'll be fine. But that's it, a totally different approach really to what's carried on in most practices and uh, capable of producing some stunning improvements in people's oral health. And um, it's true that as soon as you start to measure something it improves whether you, um, you know, whether you do anything about it or not. So just by st staining up the plaque uh, you, you get a big improvement in their oral health. So I said I'd have a chat about hygienists, and the hygienists I might cover tomorrow, and then I've got a few words about technicians. So if you've got a technician, you know a technician, or you are a technician, stay tuned.